Well, let me tell you something, you know. You go to Brazil, you go for the land of the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, you know. Where, you know, all these kids don't have much to do, got no money job. They dedicated themselves 100% in there. So they come in and train hard. I remember my time. We leave the camp like 10, 11 o'clock at night, you know. Last one close the door, you know, sparring with no time. So now become more like classing time. The sport grows so much. So you're not able, unless you develop a big school where it's a look. This area here, it is for people to spar how long you want. And this area for class, you know. So what's making the difference in Brazil is because people take time to really get better as what you know people don't come here get out of the can we kick you out here you know because it's business people oh, no, you have to close the school in Brazil people just say look let's all close the door so you, sometimes you walk by my daddy's school you look in the window it's midnight and is somebody there yeah no you go upstairs somebody rolling it's midnight you know I remember we used to I used to have a key of the school so we go out a little bit and in the bar, hanging out, you know, try picking up chicks and and all of a sudden people are like eh, five in the morning we do go sleep, ah, let's go train, everybody go training. Okay. Me and my friends and now after go sleep or maybe go and sleep in the academy. So the thing is in Brazil, whenever you show up in the school, always gonna be somebody to train you. So that's what I say, we call the mat rat. You know, so you go to Brazil, you sit down there, you're gonna have the whole day for training. It's not like in America, maybe in Canada, I'm not sure, where people do as a side thing. Some people in Brazil do as the, you know, they really wanna dedicate themselves to become a martial artist, an MMA. So, you know, people really take the time. So, I think it's good for your experience, because in Copacabana, like in Rio de Janeiro, Every single corner is a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu school. You walk around and see a guy, oh, he trained there, he's training. So, if you want to train in five schools in one day, you can. <laughs> you don't even have to get a car. You just walk and you want to go train here, I go train there, I go train here, I go train, you know? Everywhere. So, everywhere. I, I'm like, I've been in America for many years. So, I walk in the Copacabana Beach, where I'm from, where the Carson Grace Academy was, the first one in still there. So it's in the range of, uh, I would say, uh, 1,000 meters, or two, you know, like two kilometers, is at least 20 academies. Wow. Small ones, but always one good guy come up from there, you know? Yeah, see there, I think what we need is get more... Uh, more countries involved because I think they have a, a number of countries where they practice the style to become um, a part of the Olympics. There's a point as uh, the rules is getting is got much better. You know they cut it off a little bit of the stalling game. Advantage that's all the thing. Uh, many people say about steroids and things and that. You know, I'm honestly, I can't say there because in my time we didn't have anything of this. Uh, it's hard, it's very easy to point a finger and say, oh, the person doing steroids, but you don't really have any proof. You know, many people, oh, steroids, well, you don't know. So I think uh, if you really, they wanna get the thing bigger, I think they should start doing the tests. You know, because then we'll clean up, you know, clear of this, you know, if they are doing or not. Because I was an Olympic uh, sport, so like an athlete. I remember you couldn't even take like aspirin because they would get caught up on the test. Mm -hmm. You get sick, you can't even take any medicine. So why? Because if you actually go to the podium, they're going to do a blood test. Yeah. And then, how are you going to explain, oh, I took aspirin, people, yeah, right. So. You know, my point is this, it's growing. Many countries, are, you know, join the style. It's almost everywhere in the world. But they need to get to like a drug test, you know. I think there's every sport, no matter what kind of sport, even like a shooting on the Olympic, you get tests. Because 
the reason is they have to take medicine to the heartbeat to get to the slower. Mm -hmm. It's different than the other style. So. You know what I'm saying? So it's always a type of way where you can do some kind of, you know, help for medicine or some kind of thing where it's going to get you better. So in the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you can see around now everybody does the comment size. Uh, well, that guy takes steroid, that guy takes steroid, but nobody really knows. I believe they do, but who? I'm not pointing my finger, you know? You don't want to do that. You know, you be hate for many people. And if you're right, you still don't get no compliments for nobody. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, it's not your game with that. So I think if they want to get the thing better, put a three guys finish, steroid test, or any kind of test. That should be something scientific. It's cost a lot of money. So I think now, Brazil is used to go, but the fila, you know, what I heard is they try cut it off the Greco-Roman, because they say it's pretty boring. I mean, I don't think so. But they want to put a new thing. They want to cut off the Greco-Roman and put a grappling or which one is going to be the Jiu-Jitsu, no Gi or the Gi, I don't know. I am uh, trying to dedicate my time you know, it's pretty, pretty tired for me because I have to travel all over to go actually support the people myself. So this year, I've probably been over like 20 countries. You know, I went to Australia last month. This month, I went to six countries in Europe. And I'm here now. I was in Seattle last week. I'm going to Las Vegas next week. Follow week, I have to go to Connecticut. So, it's just as much you can do, you know? And the difficult part is get somebody to replace you, you know? So I, what I'm doing is I visit all my guys, you know, look at what they're doing, you know, try to develop a program for them, and keep it growing, you know? When, when, I think when people see you really dedicate your time, they just hear good things about the man, the guy really put his time and helping people, and he going with it. He actually come here. It's not like a different association where people come here and pay money. And did they ever came here? No. You know, I have a Bob Grace school. Or did they have a Carlos Grace come here? No. Would somebody came? No. Why? Because you're a small school, so they don't care about. They want to go where's the biggest schools or so I go in little tiny places, you know. And I have people, not even for my association, they're like, please come here and I have to go, you know. So, but now we're big and we're getting big. We have in Holland, we have uh, in Luxembourg, we just connect with a guy in uh, Germany, Port we have a Portugal, Hunger is excellent team. We just have a guy interested to start going with the team in Prague. And uh, I have this guy in France. So we, we have a uh, lots of people interested right now. Plus Australia, you know, I got a big guy there. Ben Hall, his student is great, you know, and Brazil is getting bigger too. We still have a lot of guys using the name, but they don't really connect. We have to put the chain together, you know, if I don't have a mislink in the thing, you know. So whereas everybody know who it is and, you know, can be able to train it together. Brazil is a pretty big country. And uh, sometimes very difficult to go to different places because the access in airplanes are sometimes expensive and the road's too far, so kind of hard to go. But in Europe, it's pretty easy to go, got trains and, yeah. you know, uh, you drive one country one beside the other. If you put, I think, the whole Europe is, is smaller than, than Brazil, so. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember, like, I was in the, last time I was, uh, I was in Hungary, like, two weeks ago, and I got in the bus, two hours later, I was in Czechoslovakia, you know, like, so. And I flew, like, a one, a half an hour, I was in, I was already in Holland, so wow. So it's pretty quick to go everywhere. Some big countries. But if you stay around the smaller ones, it's just ch -ch 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 quick, you know? And the future of the Carson Grace team is, uh, is being wh whatever I, I took there, uh, what picking up to start develop again, like grow, is much bigger now. You know, it's much bigger. 
and he keep it growing, you know. And my main guy now work with me, my right arm guy in Chicago is Daniel Vanderlei, uh, Jason Sullins, you know, and in Brazil is Arigalo. You know, he's been training with us for 28 years in Brazil. So he's the main structure there. And in Europe, we have many guys. We have a Mihaly in Hungary, England. We have a five or six schools. They're, they're tough there. And we have a Marcus Fletch, his old student, my father. You have a Tolly, you know, Bartolomeu Aguilera from Luxembourg. You know, it, and the thing is, we actually develop again the MMA team. We have a five guys fight now in Luxembourg. Like two weeks ago, everybody wins. So the team is picking up again. Thank you.